So what is it? It's basics and types. We will basically cover brief explanation of it, its types and examples, units, formula. Let's try to understand heat with an example. There is a hot block and this is a cold block. Hot block temperature is very high and cold block temperature is very less. We will measure the temperature of both hot block and cold block. Now if we touch hot block and cold block, what will happen the temperature of hot block or the temperature of the cold block? What will happen? How the energy will flow? Is it from hot block to cold block or cold block to hot block? So what will happen basically? Let us see the temperature of the hot block is 50 degrees centigrade and temperature of the cold block is 20 degrees centigrade. Since both the block are touched, the energy will be transferred. The hot block will have more energy and cold block will have less energy. So energy will be transferred from hot block to cold block. So after some time, see how this hot block is transferring energy to the cold block and from red to light purple the blocks are becoming and their temperature is 32 degrees centigrade now so basically this both the block is coming at equilibrium at 32 degrees centigrade temperature there will not be any energy transfer from any of the block so this is basically the equilibrium state so what do we understand from this example hot block changed into warm block and cold block also changed into warm block hot block leaves energy to the cold block and becoming warm block and cold block receives energy from the hot block and became warm block. So basically energy is transferred which results change in temperature of the body. So heat definition. Heat is a form of energy that flows between two bodies kept at different temperatures. Now formula of heat. It's very simple. We all know the basic formula of heat. Q is equal to M C P D T or delta T where Q is equal to heat, M is equal to mass of the body, C P specific heat and delta T is the temperature difference. Units of heat. In CGS the unit of heat is calorie. It is represented as cal. SI unit it is joules and it is represented as J and in FPS the unit of heat is BTU British Thermal Unit. Let's try to understand the relations between all the units. 1 calorie is equal to 4.184 joule or 4.2 joule 1 BTU is equal to 1055 joule so these two relation can give other relations as well and we can find out easily types of heat there are basically two types of heat one is sensible heat and another one is latent heat sensible heat means it's very simple it can sense the heat which is sensible and in case the temperature increases and latent heat you cannot sense and no change in temperature and phase change happens in latent heat and sensible heat there is no phase change sensible heat so take a plate of iron and it is at normal temperature like 30 degrees centigrade now if we heat its temperature will increase say 
80 degrees centigrade and it can be sensed and if its temperature increases more like 120 or 140 degrees centigrade again it it can be sensed and its temperature will be changed easily so when we heat the iron plate its temperature is increasing there is no change of phase and it can be sensed so this is the simple example of sensible heating or sensible heat in this temperature scale you see the temperature is changing 30 degrees centigrade then 80 degrees centigrade and 150 degrees centigrade so it is an example of sensible heat latent heat example take a container of water and initially it is at normal temperature like 30 degrees centigrade if we heat the water or the container what will happen its temperature will increase and up to 100 degrees centigrade temperature its water which is eligible for boiling and if we increase the temperature and if we give more heat to this water what will happen it will start to boil at the same temperature 100 degrees centigrade and continuous heating end of the boiling of the water and no water will be left so basically in this time we see continuous heat addition will not change the temperature the temperature is fixed at 100 degree centigrade temperature although we are increasing the heat to the water so here the water is vaporized so what does it mean here water the liquid form is changed into water vapor or gas here phase change happening this heat helps to change the phase of water from liquid to vapor see up to 100 degrees centigrade temperature its temperature is increased that is sensible load but after 100 degrees centigrade temperature heat is included but there is no change in temperature but phase change happens from water liquid to vapor this heat is called latent heat sensible heat formula first we will see the formula in fps unit it is q sensible is equal to 1.1 multiply by q multiply by t0 minus ti where q sensible is equal to heat gain from outside in btu or it is heat gain in btu q is equal to rate of flow of air in cfm that is cubic feet per minute t is equal to temperature outside in degree fahrenheit ti temperature inside in degree fahrenheit now what do you think we need to remember this formula maybe we will forget so let's try to understand this formula so that we don't need to remember just try to understand it's q is equal to mcp dt is a very known formula now uh, for q sensible we can write mcp dt or t0 minus ti we know m is equal to vd m means mass is equal to v volume multiply by density here we are representing volume as q dash and density rho so we can write m is equal to q dash multiply by rho the same value we will keep it here so we can write q dash multiply by rho multiply by cp multiply by t0 minus ti so q dash multiply by rho multiply by cp multiply by t0 minus ti we know the value of rho and cp so we can keep it first so the equation becomes q sensible is equal to rho multiply by cp multiply by q dash multiply by t0 minus ti now rho the density of air is 0 0.075 pound per feet cube and cp the heat capacity value is 0 0.2388 btu per 
pound degree Fahrenheit and Q dashed the air flow rate is in cubic feet per hour so normal air flow rate is denoted in cubic feet per minute so we can write Q dash is equal to 60 Q 60 factor is multiplied because we are changing cubic feet per hour to cubic feet per minute so the equation becomes 0 0.075 multiply by 0.2388 multiply by 60 Q into T0 minus Ti so Q sensible equal to 1.1 into Q into T0 minus Ti so this is the main formula of Q sensible heat now let's try to understand the sensible heat formula in SI unit it is very simple Q sensible is equal to MCP DT or T0 minus TI or we can write Q sensible equal to Q multiply by rho multiply by CP multiply by T0 minus TI so this is the main formula where Q sensible means heat gain in kilowatts Q equal to rate of flow of air in meter cube per second if you need to make it meter cube per hour you have to multiply by 3600 CP is equal to specific heat of air that is 1.00 kilojoule per kg degree centigrade rho equal to density of air that is 1.202 kg per meter cube t0 is equal to temperature outside in degree centigrade ti is equal to temperature inside in degree centigrade latent heat formula in fps q latent equal to 0.68 multiply by Q multiply by W O minus W I Q latent heat gain in BTU per hour Q rate of flow of air in CFM that is cubic feet per minute W O outside humidity ratio grains per water per LB of dry air W I inside humidity ratio grains of water per LB of dry air latent heat formula in SI unit Q latent equal to Q multiply by rho multiply by HWE multiply by delta W where Q latent is equal to heat gain in kilowatt Q is equal to rate of flow of air in meter cube per second same way if we need to make it meter cube per hour we have to multiply by 3600 HWE is latent heat of evaporation delta W is equal to humidity ratio difference in kg of water per kg of dry air sensible and latent heat graphical representation for water basically to understand how the sensible heat and latent heat works let's try to understand with an example to understand this representation we will see a horizontal axis which represent heating and a vertical axis which represents temperature take a piece of ice at minus 15 degrees centigrade the temperature can be different but for example we are taking an ice with minus 15 degrees centigrade now we will heat the ice up to 0 degrees centigrade temperature so what will happen the ice will be solid and there will not be any change of ice only the temperature will increase so here this temperature we can change and there will not be any change of phase and temperature change means temperature will increase from minus 15 degree centigrade to 0 degree centigrade 
and it can be sense so this is basically sensible heat now when the ice at 0 degree centigrade temperature if we still hit the ice block what will happen the ice will start to form water means the phase of solid will start to change in liquid so this is basically change in phase of ice so 0 degree centigrade temperature ice will change into 0 degree centigrade of water so here the temperature will not be changed it will be remain as 0 degree centigrade and and phase change happens so the heat we put in this system is latent heat now if we increase the heat content of 0 degree centigrade water its temperature will increase and we can sense easily up to 100 degree centigrade temperature we can sense is change in temperature and we can measure so this heat is basically sensible heat but what if if the water reached at 100 degree centigrade temperature and still we put some heat what will happen water will start to boil and we can see the vapor is forming it is coming from the water but the temperature will remain same like 100 degree centigrade so here temperature will not be changed but phase will be changed this is basically latent heat once the liquid water changed its phase into vapor if again we increase the heat content the temperature of the vapor will increase and this will be again sensible heat